everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Launchpad. My name's Grant, and today I am with local up-and-coming Arizona DJ <laughs> and soon-to-be producer and one of my good friends, Randy Perez. I appreciate you having me, Randy, man. Thank you. how you doing, bro? I'm good, man. We just watched Pat Riot absolutely fucking yeah, rip dude. his main stage debut. I'm so happy for him, so proud of him. He's oh, killing it. Man. What? Dude, so... Tell me, how long have you been DJing for? Yeah, man. So I started DJing um, around like a month into COVID. So a lot of folks just picked it up. Um, but I've been doing music since I was about 10 years old, picking okay. up the bass guitar. Uh, I used to play in like little rock bands and rip my yeah. jeans up and all that kind of shit. Um, and I loved it. I loved yeah. playing. I loved writing. Um, and I kind of got away from it uh, in college and when I moved to Arizona. Uh, and so to pick something up and have a creative outlet was amazing. So it's been great. About three years now. Nice, dude. And you were telling me a little bit earlier, so you've been DJing for a while. Um, you you like to keep it real. You like to keep it authentic. Your yeah. DJ name is your name. Yeah. Tell me, yeah. what, what's the like logic and reasoning behind doing that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I really think that it's important to show up as your authentic self, yeah. always. Yeah. Just all the different parts of your identity, all the things that make you you, yeah. whatever it's creative, whether it's serious, whether it's whatever it is, I really just try to be myself. Yeah. And we had done this name for just kind of do a show back, you know, a couple of, a year and a half ago when I used to play dubstep, uh, opening uh, with Yuki and some other great artists. Um, so shout out to Robot Island for putting me on for that. It was my first show. Um, and we did El Perez, and all my Spanish-speaking friends were like, you dumbass, that makes... <laughs> There's more than one, right? Uh, so it was the only Perez. So uh, about a month and a half ago, I was just like... It was hard to say. It was hard to like embody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I feel way more comfortable going my own name now. So. Dude, okay. I want to talk a little bit about one thing you mentioned there. So when you first started DJing, you were more playing a lot more dubstep. Yep. Now yeah. you're definitely a lot more into like the house side of things for yeah, sure. I'd absolutely. say there's still a lot of like diversity in your sets. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously we hang out all the time. So I, I've heard you DJ. <laughs> I'm so of fucking times sick of this you, guy, uh, man. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're good at like mixing in a lot of different genres. Yeah. Like, you said you're trying to work some DMB in there now too. Yeah. Like, what What is your like creative vision look like when you're behind the deck? Yeah, right? man. I think the one thing that I want folks to leave my sets with is I want them to know that it was me playing. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of different artists that are incredible. A lot of folks that are making really good music. Yeah. Um, but like. I really want my music and my sets and my mixes and hopefully when I start producing and I'm working on that right now, uh, just to have a really clear voice and identity to it. Okay. So all my influences, right? I love bass music. My first, you know, inspirations were going to dubstep shows, bass shows back in the day when I first started going to events. Uh, I love house music because it creates this groove, this consistency, this dance, this beat. Um, D&B mixes the tempo, uh, uh, some bass, rock. I mean, I, I really just want to do something just a little bit different if I can. Yeah. What, okay, what sets you apart from other DJs? Yeah. Like, obviously, I, energy is a huge <laughs> thing, and I'm sure yeah. you're going to touch on that. Yeah. I'll definitely echo that. Like, your energy is unmatched when you're behind a deck. Thank you. Thing. I appreciate that. But, like, what, what else, like, sets you apart? Well, I mean, I think, I think the reason that I have so much energy when I play is... I grew up on like punk music and rock and metal and all these really heavy influences yeah. and there's almost like a, a frenetic energy or like a desperation in those crowds and it's just like letting this thing out that you can't always articulate but you're all in it together and it's letting it out and so for me like if I watch a DJ who's playing and they don't seem like they're into it or like having the time of their life it's yeah. hard for me to pick up on it yeah. uh, so I think that's one big thing. I think we talked about trying to do different things musically, tempo changes, adding some rock songs when I can, uh, adding DNB now. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, my favorite sets that I ever did was when I played Full Moon uh, last okay. August. I opened with like Motley Crue, Girls, 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 was feeling okay, fucking yeah. some type of way over nice. with that shit. That was fun. Yeah. House, we did dubstep, my friend's edits, we did some yeah. bass. Uh, we did like an Evanescence remix, Bring Me Back to Life. I was screaming like, and then I went back to house. And it just was like this full embodiment of what I think we can do with music. So. Nice, dude. So I want to talk a little bit about what's coming up, what's on the horizon right now. Yeah. We got a big show, your first Relentless Beach show coming yeah, up. Yeah, man. It's on your it, birthday. It is on my birthday. That's, <laughs> awesome, That's so exciting. Yeah. Right? Talk to me about the feelings of getting booked for your first like Relentless Beats event. How do you yeah, feel about it? It felt so good, man. It felt so affirming. Um, I got really emotional actually when I saw the email. So, you know, I've been playing, I'm playing clubs, I'm playing bars, you know, I just love to play. And I think what people don't see is just how much time we spend trying to get better. Yeah. And the other thing is, I, I going back to how I try to differentiate myself is, once I got the fundamentals of mixing down, anybody can kind of go in and out of songs. 16 yeah. bars, go in and out. 
And what I wanted to do, and what I hope people hear in my sets, and they'll hear at this Relentless Beat Show, is I make a lot of live mashups, I do vocal play, I change bass lines, I do double drops with house. I okay. really just try to do something different. Yeah. Um, but when I got that email, man, I almost missed it. <laughs> I was so fucking, oh my god. That shit, I don't know, the devil comes and gets my ass. So, um, you know, I had, uh, I was actually on a flight from LA to Texas. Yeah. Got to Texas for work. And then I was checking my personal email the next day and I was like, Oh, shit. Uh, I was so I, I was so late to the game. I almost yeah. missed it, and so uh, really, really grateful for the opportunity. Uh, it's on my birthday, and I just think that everything happens the way it's supposed to. Yeah. I had asked for shows before. I'd requested yeah. other events, yeah. but when I saw that one on my birthday, I was like, "How fucking dope would that's, it be if that just worked out that way and built off so, of that?" So it felt. I, I cried. I called my mom. Um, then I, I called my mom. My mom was like. I really wish she went to law school, but <laughs> but DJ is fine yeah, yeah. too. Um, yeah. So shout out my mom; she's super yeah. supportive. But um, that was a really good feeling. Yeah, but shout out some other people too. Who are you thankful for in life? Who are you grateful for right now? Man, you know, so I'm not from Arizona originally. Uh, I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, and I moved here nine years ago uh, with me, my best friend Clayton, his girlfriend Riley, and that was it. I had never wow. been to Arizona. Yeah. I didn't know nobody. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was hard at first. It was hard to make friends. It was hard to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, I got involved politically. I got involved in my community. Yeah. Uh, really found a home and my voice and my um, story there. And so I'm really grateful for all these people that have kind of uplifted me. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so many people have put me on when they didn't really have to, yeah. when I was still struggling with the fundamentals. Um, you know, so shout out Peachy Keen, number one, my fucking homegirl, just the best. I love her, I've known her for so long. She, Christina is the, yeah. um, the fucking best. And you know, I was so proud of her when she won the Gold Rush competition. I'm so proud of what she's doing right now. She was always someone that I could send a mix or an idea or whatever it is. Pat Riot, who just fucking ripped main stage, I could send him an idea or a mix. Q's, who's playing tonight with his festival debut. Um, Residuo, Dono, man. Dono put me on, yeah. too, multiple times. My first Sunbar gig was Dono. Yeah. Um, you know, he booked me for Casa. I had a great time. Um, so I, I, a lot of folks have just given me something when I didn't necessarily, like, have it all together yet, but they believe that I could do it. So I'm really grateful for everybody. I love that, man. Let's talk moving forward. What are what are some big goals you have for yourself moving forward? You know, man, I, I it's it's actually interesting. It's been hard for me to like fully um, lean into this like identity of being an artist. Yeah. So like even this interview, I was thinking about it. I was like, this will be the first time that like I've solely just talked about like artistic stuff yeah. and creativity and all those things because I really put it away for years. Um, like I said, I was in bands as a kid. Kind of got away from that as I got to college. Stopped writing. I love yeah. to write. I write poetry. I write lyrics. I write songs. Yeah. And I got away from that. And I think, again, I think it was just like during COVID, I had to just say what was really important to me. I had given so much politically and to my community and nothing to myself. I was just empty. Um, and so I just started like pouring out all these things I had been sitting with for so long. Um, and so going forward, like I said, I'm, I really want to produce music that has a very distinct sound, a very distinct voice. I've got some really fun ideas. It's just the act of doing. Um, I love to write lyrics. Uh, I would love to work with other producers and vocalists and write. I have so many songs I just sit on. Um, and I want to play. I, I, Nick is such an inspiration, man. He's worked so fucking hard. Uh, and he's played this stage. I would love a year from now for us to be talking about that. Um, and I really, really just... I have, I have dreams that I can talk about now that yeah. I kind of kept locked in for a long yeah. time, um, but now I'm just trying to be myself and do what I can. So I love it, man. It kind of ties back into that, just being like your real authentic self and just being true to who you are kind of thing. Yeah. I want to hear from you. What is the biggest piece of advice you would give to just anybody out there? Just in general, like general advice, not yeah. even to like a DJ or anything, just like general life advice that is applicable for anybody. I, I think something that I did for a long time that was super harmful to my mental health, my physical health eventually, all the things, was I cared so much about what other people thought about me. Even when I started DJing, yeah. all the content that right. I've been putting out for years and years and years was political. Yeah. Um, you know, it was like in the news or it was on TV debating or it was on stage or speaking at rallies or speaking at the legislature and all these things. And I had actually forgotten that I had a voice beyond my work identity. Um, and so if you have 
something inside you that like you just need to do and need to get out. Who knows where this will take me? I love it so much. I'm, my friends always say they'd never see me so happy as when I'm behind the deck and mixing. And I, I that's when I was very affirmed that I should be doing music again. Um, so if you have something that like you love and you're passionate about and you need to just let out, don't repress it for the sake of work or for what other people are going to fucking think. I got so much shit when I started DJing from all my political fucking people. I wasn't serious. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. I didn't care as much anymore. Um, and I care so much about all the things. Uh, but most importantly, I care about how I'm doing personally because if I show up in a good place yeah. mentally, then I can support anybody else. So I hope that folks will do that. I love that, dude. That's beautiful advice, man. I, I could fucking pick your brain on that all day, man. That's great, dude. Oh, my Tell God. Me, uh, oh, we kind of talked a little earlier, some people in your life that you're thankful for. Yeah. We're really big on gratitude here and just being, like, appreciative and thankful for, like, all the blessings we have in life. Like, what are some other things you're thankful for in life right now? You know, I'm thankful for my family. Um, you know, my mom is so amazing. She's so supportive. Uh, my friends call her Patty. Shout out Patty. Shout out you, mom. I Shout love you. Patty. <laughs> Patty's the shit. Um, you know, my stepdad, Tom, he actually has a musical background. He used to play in rock bands. Uh, he was a drummer, so we were always around music. He was actually one of the first people that used to play albums in the car. He loved, like, U2 and the Rolling Stones and Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen. Okay. So I grew up on this rock music, and, you know, I have a very vivid memory of this. I was nine years old. Um, and I was watching MTV back when yeah. MTV used to play fucking videos. Okay. Uh, so that was like a bygone era. We're old as shit now. Uh, and I was sitting on the floor watching MTV. And um, there was no way we were going to get through this without talking about Fall Out Boy. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. I was waiting for it. You were waiting for it. So, uh, so I have a very memory. I was sitting there, probably cross-legged like a little kid. And the dance dance music video came on. And I watched this happen. And I watched Pete Wentz just lose his shit and de and the lyrics and the energy and the freneticism and the desperation and all of it and I was like I want to do that and to my parents credit they bought me a bass guitar they got me lessons they supported they drove me to and from lessons they drove me to my band practices in the garage yeah. they set us up in the basement um, I don't think I've ever really thanked them for that actually so I really appreciate you asking because yeah. um, they really invested in that musically I quit on it uh, when I was in college and post-college because I was focused on other things. But I watched a video today, actually, um, I watched a video of eighth grade. It's still, I'll send it to you, you'll get a kick out of it. Uh, I watched a video of me performing in a rock band at my eighth grade talent show. Oh yeah? I have my Pete Wentz replica bass guitar. Oh, I need this video. I'll say, <laughs> <laughs> fuck this interview, let's put this fucking. <laughs> um, and I'm playing, and it's that same energy, uh, it's that same level, and my yeah. mom dropped me off for that yeah. show. So, uh, I'm so grateful for that. Um, and uh, I really think I, I owe it to them uh, to keep that going, so. I love that, man. You love that video. I'm, I'm sure you would. <laughs> yeah, I, I got I to gotta ask just because I'm curious and I want to know a little bit more about it. Tell me a little bit about like what you do in your day job and like how you're involved like politically yeah. and like the campaigning and things like that because to me that just sounds super interesting and like I just kind of want to pick your brain a little bit on that kind no, of thing. No, absolutely. And I, I, like I said, I, I, I try to... It almost felt like a while for like two separate identities, but yeah. when I get to combine them, I think yeah. there's so much power in music. There's been so much movements that yeah. have been led by music, yeah. um, and there can be so much joy even in political struggle. Uh, and we've lost that for a while, and I really yeah. try to bring that joy to so yeah. many places that I work. Yeah. Um, so I've been involved. We, we need more of that out there. Thank you, brother. Uh, so I mean, I've been working in politics about nine years now. Uh, I started on like local campaigns. Yeah. I managed campaigns. Yeah. Uh, I worked at different nonprofits. I worked um, at an organization. Shout out to my my friends at Lucha, Living United for Change in Arizona, nonprofit on the west side doing incredible work in the Latino community. Um, and I really found my voice, I found my story there, I found a community that would hold me and help me understand my identity. Uh, you know, uh, I'm the only Perez in my family, so I'm the only Latino in my family. Uh, I don't have a relationship with my dad, who was also Mexican-American. And so they really helped me understand that. That's a big part of how I look at politics. Um, okay. And it's been an incredible experience. Um, I've been to this, this with these people that really, really have dug in and fought back against so many systems of oppression that we deal with. Uh, and I'm really proud to just be a small part of it and follow their lead and use my privileges the best I can. So it's been a great experience. I love that, dude. Very well said. Yeah, I, I love what you're saying about just kind of bringing like joy into essentially an industry that doesn't have a ton of joy in it. So that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I, it, obviously comes across in your music and just 
your everyday persona, Thank and, like, you. how you carry yourself, and how you talk to people. And Thank you. Definitely, a, definitely an inspirational thing, and I think a lot of people draw from your energy. Thank you. I, I appreciate it, man. It's been um, there's something that we talk about in politics is like when I speak. I'm not only speaking for myself, I'm speaking on behalf of all the people that have invested yeah. in me, given me their time, given me their love when I was down on my personal luck and yeah. just not feeling good or really high and folks yeah. that were there with me. Um, and it's the same musically, folks, that when I was struggling and I couldn't get it right and I couldn't get the transition or I didn't understand, they were there too. Uh, and so when I speak politically, I'm carrying them. When I'm mixing, all the people that we talked about earlier, when I'm performing, I'm thinking about them and yeah. trying to make everybody proud and yeah. trying to make myself proud too. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, real quick, most fun set you've ever played. Most fun set I ever played. The next one? <laughs> the next one? <laughs> the next one. Uh, let's see. Are you seeing in the future? Yeah, no, no. Let's see. What's the most Honestly, that's prob probably going to be up there for uh, sure. I mean, it's going to be great at Dark Star, April 29th, opening for Ski Tour. Yep. Um, but I, I really think um, the most fun show I've ever played was at Casa. It, you know what it was? It was two days after the election. Okay. And Donald booked me, and I was like, am I going to have fucking time and energy to, like, go play a set? And are my friends going to show up who have just been working on this election? Yeah. And they did. They packed yeah, that okay. motherfucker out. Um, and it was so much fun because I'm such an interactive person. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the boiler room aspect. It's interacting with folks. Again, I want people to be like, I just watched Randy play. I didn't just watch another house DJ play. I, didn't, I yeah. could tell that someone is behind the decks that I can relate to. Um, but I really am looking forward to the ski tour show. Okay, our favorite question that we always love to ask, what's your favorite venue here that you like to play at? Ooh. <laughs> uh, my favorite venue that I ever played, um, I really think Casa, man. I, I, there's something special about Casa with the you interactivity. The Casa format is Dude, nice, fucking bro. awesome. Like, I, I like, uh, what do you call it, like the boiler room? Yeah, man, the 360 yeah. setup. You know, anytime that you can play and interact with people and, you know, grab their hands or, like, yeah. sing along with them or, like, yeah. make really close eye contact. I played Sunbar um, upstairs back, like, May 2022, and that was an incredible experience. Yeah. I was nervous as fuck. I remember I almost fell walking up the steps. <laughs> I, there's a there's like a little step that so DJs beware if you haven't played somewhere yet. There's a little fucking uh, um, and I was almost fell. Um, and who knows what the hell I sounded like? Probably shit. But um, it was such a great experience. Um, and now this Dark Star show I think is like the best of both worlds, right? Yeah, yeah. Where it's like it's half a boiler room. The Knock Two show there was yeah, like yeah. the greatest example. It's the energy. It's it's the passion. It's the yeah. movement. It's this it's this yeah. feeling of like freneticism. So. I love that, man. All right, anything else you want to shout out or talk about before we wrap things up here? Shout out to fucking Moon Landing. I appreciate y'all for putting me on. Uh, we haven't talked about the guest mix that I'm doing for y'all either. Yes, dude, so, so I just want to say I'm going to have a guest mix out with these fucking awesome people. Um, it's so much fun. I had a great time putting it together. I think it's a really great example of my sound. It's a lot of different stuff. It's Spanish music. It's club. It's bass. Yeah. It's tech. It's all these different things. Yeah. A lot of cool mashups in there. Really excited. Hope you'll check it out. Yeah. Um, and I hope to see folks at Darkstar, man. I want to pack it out. Uh, and really make a good impression uh, and just keep on building for there. So thank you all so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate you, brother. Man, we're happy to be in your corner. We're happy to support you. I will say, like, we get guest mixes a lot and uh, we listen to a ton of them. Yeah. Yours is definitely at, like, in my life. He might be lying, but he said he listened I, to it three times. So. I, I have listened to it three separate times, which is <laughs> honestly a record for the guest mixes I listen to there. But we appreciate you sending that over. We appreciate yeah, you taking the time with Absolutely, us. Absolutely, man. man. Uh, anything else you want to shout out before we wrap it up? Just here? thank you all so much. Um, um, I really hope to put out some really cool music this year. I'm yeah. really more inspired than ever. Thanks to this conversation. Thanks of to seeing my man. one of my best friends, Nick, up there yeah. just kicking fucking ass. Um, and I have some really cool ideas. Yeah. Uh, and I hope that y'all get to hear them. I promise yeah. that I'm going to work on that. So thank you very much. I'm excited to see it all come to fruition, man. Uh, I think we'll be looking back at this a year from now and uh, just be excited by a lot of your growth, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time with us. Uh, Thank you guys for sticking around for another episode of the Launchpad. My name is Grant and this is Randy Perez. Thanks, y'all. Thank you guys. Yeah.